In Epicor 10.2.700, I'll show you how to use engineering task sets, but most of these steps are the same in earlier versions of Epicor. Engineering task sets can be sort of a workflow of steps that will be done to assign tasks to users, to make changes in the engineering area. I'll show a basic workflow today, but you can create more complicated ones based on what you will see today. So today we'll be talking about the general areas shown here in this presentation. We'll be discussing setting up users, workforce IDs, workflow groups, setting up roles, tasks, and task types, setting up milestones and next milestones in task sets, working with task sets in task lists, and then working with task sets in engineering workbench. And then we'll, we can have, have some time where we can review at the end. Each of the following slides will go into more detail about each of these topics. So this slide shows the users, work, workforce IDs, and workflow groups. In order to use task sets in engineering, you'll need to plan which users need which permissions and the roles they'll need to play for the tasks. Here I set up three generic engineer user accounts and one generic engineer manager account. Then next we set up the workforce IDs for these users. Within the workforce maintenance screen, you can link the users Epicor users to a, a workforce ID, and you can also set up authorized users. One default authorized user needs to be defined for each workforce ID, and additional users can be authorized to allow them to act on tasks for the default user. So here we can see we have the engineering one who has three authorized users, and the other two engineerings don't have, they only have their own user as an authorized user. Finally, you set up a workflow group, as shown here, to assign the default task set for the workflow to be in place. When you check a part, check out a part, or when you create an eco group, you can then assign the workflow group and task set. Here we can show that you can set up the workflow group and the task set when you check out a group. When you set up tasks, and the workforce IDs, roll codes should be assigned. Think of these as some type of levels of authority to do tasks. Epicor has included the different task types shown here in their training database, and you can add to them if required. You'll also need to create tasks. Basically, this is the task list I created for our demo today, and they will be each action, decision, or item that you need to process when you step through your engineering changes. You can decide if you want the tasks to be mandatory, if anyone can approve them, if you want alerts for creating the tasks and or completing the tasks. A priority can be assigned, which defaults to 50, and then the task type and the roll code must be assigned. Next, you'll set up a task set by giving it a name and a description. Here, my description is lunch and learning engineering. <clears throat> and a workflow type. The workflow type will be either ECO for engineering, CRM if you're using customer relationship management, help desk or time and expense, because task sets can be used across those areas. Then you'll need to set up each milestone for the task set. Here we listed all my milestones, and then each milestone is automatically assigned a sequence code. You choose a task, choose the current stage. If it's, choose if it's the first milestone, if you want to allow checkout or check-in or both, if you want to allow to mark it complete. Role code automatically comes in from the task, task chosen. After you set up the milestones, you'll want to set up the next milestone for each. 
So first you would set up all your original milestones and then you would do new to say new next milestone. The next milestone determines the order in which the tasks should be followed through. Usually you'll enter the milestones in the correct order, but if not, you can change the order by selecting a different next milestone. Working with the tasks in task lists. Once an Epicor user has items assigned to him or her, he or she is an authorized user or the assignee tasks can be viewed and updated in the task list menu items shown here through production management, engineering, general operations, and there's a task list. And for this specific user, you can bring up any of the tasks that are assigned to engineering one. And then you can work on completing it. And you can see the details of the next task, the next stage, and um, you can put in a reason code if you'd like. So you can see this information either in the detail sheet or the list sheet, and you can mark them complete on either pane and select a reason if you need it. Um, once the task is completed and saved, the task will no longer automatically be shown on the task list, but you can view previously completed tasks if you select actions and show all tasks. Similarly, we can work with task sets in engineering workbench. So once once an Epicor user has items assigned to him or her, and if she is he or she is authorized user for an ass, the assignee, tasks can be viewed and updated in the tab in Engineering Workbench. First, you select the task in the tree under the Tasks Tree tab, and then you can move over to the Maintenance tab, which looks similar to what we saw in Task Lists, where you can choose to complete and put in a reason code, see the next code, etc. If you are um, an authorized user, you can change the assigned to down here if you if it's assigned to somebody that you're an authorized user for. Once the task is marked complete and saved or updated, the task will be updated in the tree view to show a green check mark. For example, these two are completed and the rest are not. So now we can take a look at this all in Epicor itself. So we start with checking out a part. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do actions, revision, check out the revision. I'll create a, a new a new eco group. And here's where we can say which workflow group we want um, to assign this to. And this is the default one that I had assigned to which workflow group. You can also choose any of the other ones that this workflow group has ability to use. And so we'll say OK. So now we can go to the engineering workbench and we're going to do a new revision. So here we can see our tasks listed that we want to do for this task set. So we want to document changes. So we can pretend that we wrote up some changes that we want for this revision. And then we can pretend that we're going to be completing this. Actually, I think I'm in here right now as um, 
Epicor, which is not one of the users. So let me clear this. And I have one of the users open here. This is engineering one user. So this is first task is assigned to the engineering one and engineering one could change it to assign it to somebody else who's related to who's authorized for engineering one. But um, it can also pretend that they're done with their document changes and click complete. And then you can either click update here or save here. And then you go to the tree view and you can see your first step is approved. Now, the second one is required is approval by the engineering manager. So that's going to be grayed out because only the engineering manager can do that. I'm also signed in as the engineering manager. So here, once we open up the task list, which I had saved and recently used, um, we can see the information regarding the task. And this is sequence 20 and which part. And you can choose to, again, complete it, put in a reason code if you want to, which we don't have any reason codes set up. But then once you choose to complete it, you can hit save and if you refresh, it won't be there anymore. But you can also look at show all tasks and you can see any of them that were from today or previous days also for this particular user. Now, if we refresh an engineering workbench, we should be able to see also the um, tasks updated there from the engineering manager. And so the next task is to create bill of materials. So basically you can add any materials. And then you can pretend that you're done with that one. Oh, we have to select it in the tree. And you just continue on with that and completing your tasks throughout the um, task list until you're completely done. Let me see if there's any questions. I don't see any questions so far. Um, we can also look at the setup items if you'd like. The task types, as I mentioned, were default ones that were set up by Epicor. And you can see what they are and what is set up and what you can change or you can add if you'd like to in the task types tasks. You can see what's already in here and you know that there are different ones for whether it's eco or they might be for CRM, other action items, etc. But you can see the different options that you need to set up here. You need to set up a ID, a description, priorities, defaults to 50. And then you choose one of the already set up action type or task types, and then um, which person should be doing that, which role code needs to do that. And then the uh, task set, 
is where you can search for existing ones and you can see the setup done here. We set up each of the milestones in the order we wanted to do them, but if they were in a different order, you can choose the next milestone instead of listing engineering document approval as your next milestone. You could list engineering create bill of materials if that was your next milestone. The workflow group and the workforce ID, we can see the ones that we set up previously. So engineering one, as I mentioned, I set up authorized users for engineering one, but the other engineering ones do not have authorized users other than themselves. So you set up the ID, you can put in a person contact and then um, what role they are. And then to add the authorized users, you'll do a new authorized user. And you can see in this case, there's several of them. And the first one is the engineering one who's gonna be the default user. The workflow group. is basically just setting up the name and the uh, description and which workflow type you're looking at here because you can use all different four types there. And then you can assign it a default task set based on the ones you had already set up in the system. So that's about all I had to show you today. So using the engineering task sets can be as complex as you need for your business. I hope you enjoyed our presentation today and continue to develop your own engineering task sets. As always, it's best to develop in a test environment so you can tweak the flow and responses needed. Well, thank you everyone. I'm gonna go ahead and end the meeting. I'm not getting any further questions. Have a great day.